Hello and welcome to theCUBE, special coverage of Sapphire Now. We're here in Palo Alto, Sapphire Now, SAP's premier conference in Orlando. We are in Palo Alto, we have folks on the ground in Orlando. Special three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Taking you through all the action from our new studio in Palo Alto, 4,500 square feet, our chance to cover events. When we can't get there in person, we certainly will cover it from here. And that's what we're going to do for the next three days. We're going to have stories on the ground. No stories too small, we're going to chase them all down. We have people calling in. We have folks on the ground, we're going to be Skyping in, calling in, whatever it takes to get the story out to you, we're going to do it. And certainly, expert coverage from inside the studio here. We've got George Gilbert from Wikibon, and a variety of folks who did not make it to Orlando will be coming into Palo Alto to sit down and talk with us. I'm John Furrier, my co-host is Jeff Frick. Jeff, we'll do whatever it takes. We'll cover from our studio. We'll go to Orlando virtually, with the Twitter hashtag Sapphire now, we're on that. We have folks on the ground. A lot of great news coming out of Sapphire. What do you think? I mean, you were just at Dell EMC World last week and the story was all about kind of hybrid cloud and customer choice and it sounds like that's a recurring theme here at SAP where they've got a lot of cloud options based on what their customer wants to do. I mean, if, I mean I, this sounds really bad to say for someone who follows the tech industry, but I just think this digital transformation thing is just overplayed. But it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the Groundhog's Day moment. The movie just keeps replaying itself. Digital transformation, digital transformation. And again, just like every other conference, like Dell EMC World and every other one, digitally transforming your business is the theme. A little bit played, I would say business transformation is like, I would say the next chapter of what's happening, what you see from these shows, specifically at Dell EMC World, you were at ServiceNow, OpenStack, all the different events, Red Hat, some of the ones we've been going to this past couple of weeks is the business impact of the technology. And SAP highlights that with their results and their keynotes and the news that are drops today, which is, look at. They have been doing SAP for all the top companies powering with SAP as an Oracle, but now the customers want to go beyond the legacy SAP. And this has been a challenge for SAP over the past five years. They've had all the right messaging, digital dashboards, real time for business, all there. But the problem was they were missing a big piece of it. That is cloud native and really aligning with the explosive growth of cloud computing, cloud native, which is the new application developer. This new class of developers emerging, and that's different than the in-house SAP guys, by the way, which is still a massive market. Sure. That's the big trend, and of course, machine learning, AI, the kinds of design tooling that you'd expect to see, they're calling that Leonardo. I think it really shows the power of the, of the consumer and the impact that the big public clouds have had on the marketplace, right, with, with Google and with Amazon. Uh, especially Microsoft as well coming in into play. And I think it's what's interesting on the SAP tact is they have their own cloud, but now they've, you know, are very aggressively following up on an earlier announcement at Google Cloud Platform show uh, with more announcements at this show. And then they continue to strengthen their relationship with Amazon. So it's a pretty interesting place if you're an SAP customer um, really having options around where, to, what cloud and what cloud deployment is, is really no longer an argument. You've got a lot of options that they Very different than Oracle, which is still yeah. pretty much exclusively Oracle on the Oracle cloud. It's a very different kind of attack. Yeah, and just reading the hard news from, from hitting the ground today out down in Orlando is uh, the key, key points, I'll just summarize it real quick. Expanded SAP Leonardo, digital innovation system. SAP Google expand the strategic partnership. SAP Cloud Platform accelerates adoption, improves choice, advances cons consumption for customers. That essentially is it, and there's a lot of other subtext going on, HANA Enterprise Cloud, a lot of other massive pockets, but in terms of top level news, it's Leonardo, okay, Leonardo da Vinci, dead creative genius, okay, but that is all about providing the tools for business to be successful in a digital world. But to me, the big story, Jeff, is the the transformation of what used to be called HANA Cloud Platform to SAP Cloud Platform. This is their platform as a service bet around winning the new developers, the cloud native. Last year at Sapphire, we actually had theCUBE on the ground. They announced a deal with Apple Computer around iOS and developers. That now has shipped as a general availability. So you're seeing SAP bringing two worlds together. The cloud native world, which had never played in much, to the SAP ecosystem, which is flush with cash. There's a ton of money to be made in that world. The install base is massive. Now you have the cloud computing hybrid cloud with the HANA cloud platform, I mean the SAP cloud platform to bring that in. Again, I, I still can't even get it right. I don't know, so let's just break it down as simply as you can, John. Why did they change a name? 
Uh, and what exactly do they have today? Well, here's the first of all problem. I'm so used to saying HANA because they've been branding They've been Hana, banging HANA for a decade. It's just like in my brain. Forever. I just can't get it out. SAP HANA. So <laughs> and, it, and they actually called it HANA Cloud Platform before. Right, right. But HANA is such a massive set of capabilities that they really wanted to break out the platform as a service, which is the cloud native play, where all the action is for developers. From HANA, a viable product that they have that everyone's using. So they have two clouds that we can say, SAP Cloud Platform, that's the cloud native, and then HANA Enterprise Cloud. One's a delivery mechanism, one's a developer environment. That's the way I like to think about it. I'm a HANA customer, I'm going to need Enterprise Cloud to take my HANA solution and extend it up with self-service, some provisioning, some partnerships with AWS, Google, and all the different clouds, getting my legacy HANA Enterprise software to be cloud enabled. That's HANA Enterprise Cloud. SAP Cloud Platform is for Folks who don't who like DevOps, the cloud native world that we that we cover it deeply. Okay, and then how how do you look at the um, kind of Google partnership, Google Cloud Platform versus AWS partnership? SAP's going dual track. Is it just simply to have choice based on what their customers? Are they yeah. fundamentally different relationships? How do you read that? This is where I think SAP's got genius going on, but they might screw it up because they can't get out of their own way. Can't use genius anymore. So, We've had enough so genius. This could be a brilliant strike of, of, of move for SAP. I think it's a brilliant move in the way they're playing it out. But again, like I said, SAP, they might not be able to get out of their own way. That's going to be their issue. But from a functionality standpoint, this multi-cloud opportunity. They've been with Amazon for many, many years. They announced a partnership with Google, which is just kind of toe in the water. That's trying to advance pretty quickly. Not a lot of meat in the bone there. And Azure relationships. So SAP wants to put their cloud platform, their platform as a service, in all the different major clouds so that their legacy can work on-prem and in whichever cloud the customer chooses. Yeah, I, I think, think that's there a, is. That is a multi-cloud strategy that is viable for SAP, unlike say Oracle, which isn't multi-cloud, right, it's right. Oracle right, cloud. Right. <laughs> so, you know, the I SAP Oracle, you know, head to head thing has been kind of like taking completely different paths. Right, Someone right. will be right. But I think there's more meat on the bone with the Google thing than maybe maybe uh, we know of or you're aware of or whatever. I mean, Burnt did come and get in the keynote with Diane Green at Google Cloud Platform. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's relatively significant well, it'll be interesting to see how it shapes out, and again, what are the customer choices that are going to drive them to Amazon, or to the SAP Cloud, or to the Google Cloud. I guess at the end of the day, it's about choice, and I know that was a big theme at, at Dell EMC World, is that everyone has to cater to the choice of the customer, or else it's just too easy for them to flip uh, well, a lot I mean, of these other of clouds. Google, I mean, when I say not ready for prime time, I mean, Google's got a lot of work to do. SAP as a company is not for as far down the road with Google as they are with Amazon and Azure, just to make my point clear. Okay. But they do have are announcing um, additional certifications of uh, the co-innovation between SAP and Google, between SAP Cloud Platform and Google uh, Cloud Platform, um, IoT, machine learning. Mm -hmm. They certified SAP NetWeaver and a variety of uh, S4 HANA, business warehousing, essentially more marketplace to accelerate the digital transformation. And again, this is all about SAP co-locating in Google. Right, right. And if a customer wants to take advantage of TensorFlow and all the goodness of, say, Google, that's a good move for SAP. And again, I think this is a brilliant strategy for SAP if they don't screw it up. Right, right. And potentially that's the bridge to, like you said, it's been a little bit of Groundhog Day with Cloud, 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 but what's really the theme of 2017 is AI and machine learning. And it's an interesting bridge with Google Cloud to their TensorFlow as another way to bring AI and machine learning into the applications. Pretty interesting So way Jeff, to we've it. been covering a lot of events. One, one comment I will say is that SAP always has great messaging, and I got to say, we've been, we've been covering our eighth year covering Sapphire now. Um, we've only missed it like two years over the, that time span. The, it's a lot like Oracle in the sense that it's a very business-oriented uh, uh, event, but they have good pulse. Bill, Bill McDermott, great communicator, he, great customer focused person, always has his hand on the pulse. They have great messaging, and they tend to pick the right waves, and they've had some some false starts with cloud, and they bought had some acquisitions, things have been cobbled together, but they've never wavered from their mission, and the mission always has always been powering um, the speed of business, great software solutions. The issue is, they're moving off of SAP to new cloud solutions, 
So SAP is taking a proactive strike to say, look it, we can play in the cloud, therefore this multi-cloud game is critical for the growth of SAP in my opinion. But how much of the SAP in cloud will be new greenfield opportunities where people want the flexibility and a lot of the, the, the attributes of cloud versus they're not migrating old R3 instances into the cloud. I mean, this this is, I would assume, mainly new greenfield opportunities. Well, I think I think it's both, right? I mean, I think you have greenfield developers basically that are being hired by their customers to build apps, top line driven apps, and also you know some consolidation apps. But mainly, you know, their customers are hiring developers. Hey, we need a mobile app for our business, so you need to have data, you need to have some domain expertise. But at the end of the day, the system of records probably stored in some SAP system somewhere. Right, right. So what they're trying to do is decouple the dependency between that developer, but still use SAP, but and offer an extension of SAP. It really is an opportunity in my mind for that to happen, and also partners. Look at Accenture, Capgemini, all these different partners, they are poised to create, create some great value and make some cash along the way. Remember the mini computer boom. People who lined their pockets with cash were the integrators, just the large global system integrators. So I think that and the channel partners are going to have a great opportunity to take advantage of pre-existing legacy accounts and to grow them further. Well, they certainly have a giant ecosystem. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's one of the startup challenges that new companies start is to build that ecosystem. I mean, they have a giant ecosystem. Uh, so. What are you looking for this week besides the obvious announcement? Any kind of tells that you're that you want to see to let you know that that SAP is you know continues to be on track and move with the shifting tides of the market trends? Well, to me, I'm looking at the multi-cloud story. It's a good story. Not sure how baked it is, but from a story standpoint, I really like it. I think that whoever can really crack the code on multi-cloud in a viable way. Uh, is going to be a winner. So to me, I'm going to be looking heavily at the multi-cloud stuff coming out of Orlando. I'm interested to see how the developer traction pans out. I'm really interested in following up on the Apple uh, relationship and seeing how that pans out. And then ultimately, how the rest of SAP can transform as a business because SAP tends to have a lot of buzzwords, a lot of a lot of word salad, not a lot of, you know, breaking it down in straight English. So to me, SAP, uh, where I'm critical of them is they kind of can't get out of their own way, Jeff. So sometimes they kind of get caught in that old world thinking when the world is moving very, very fast. You look at Amazon Web Services, you look at what Google's doing, you look at what um, VMware's changing. I mean, VMware, I was talking to Pat Gelsinger, he was in the dumps in 2016, now he's flying high. He went from almost being fired, stock at a 52 week low, to them soaring, they didn't have a market cap that's greater than HPE. So these old incumbents like SAP, they have to transform their culture, get relevant, and get real. And if they can't show the proof points, with customer wins and partners and multi-cloud, then they're going to be on shaky ground, so that's what I'm looking for. All right, well, it should be a good week. We're looking forward to okay, it. Okay, we are here in the Palo Alto studio, our new 4,500 square foot operation. We can do coverage here and then have on the ground coverage of which we will be doing all week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for SAP Sapphire Now. Got great guests coming in, great editorial coverage, and I want to thank our sponsors, SAP, for you know allowing us to do this and continue the CUBE tradition at Sapphire Now. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. More coming after this short break.